I'm Reggie Cathy, and welcome to Square One Squares, the game show where you separate mathematical fact from fiction. And now let's meet our host, a square for all seasons, Mr. Square himself, Larry Cedar. Ho, 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 ho! Hi, everyone. How you doing? Welcome to Square One Squares. Today we're going to ask you whether you can tell the difference between mathematical truth and mathematical fiction. But before we get started, I would like you to meet my sensational assistant for today, Cynthia Darlow. Hi. Hi, Larry. How are you doing today? Wonderful. All right. And our players for today, who will be answering the questions from Square One TV, Arthur Howard and Chris Frankel. Oh, 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 oh. They're arguing already. I can't believe it. Settle down, guys. Okay, let's meet our contestants for today. Representing Red is David. How are you doing, David? Oh, what school do you go to? Shelter Rock. Shelter Rock. That sounds so cool. I love that. All right. And representing Blue is Jamie. How are you doing today? Pretty good. I understand you like to collect coins? Yeah. Well, that's, you should find this interesting. We're going to have a question today that involves coins, so this should be great. Let's talk about the rules of the game. The object is to get three squares in a row, just like tic-tac-toe, vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. Now, to get things started, we're going to give away the middle square. That's going to be a wild square. It can be used by either blue or red at any time during the game. Here's how we play. I'm going to ask you to pick a square. I will then ask our players a mathematical question. One of them, conveniently, will answer with the truth. That's very nice. However, one of them will answer with a bluff. You have to watch out for them. Now, it's up to you to determine which of them is telling the truth. If you're right, your color wins the square. However, if you're wrong, your opponent's color will win the square. So be very careful. Now, before the game, we flipped a coin. Who won the toss? Mm -hmm. David won. All right, so let's get things started right now. Pick a square, David. Um, S. S, the top left square, and here we go. First question, please observe. Cynthia just got back from Hollywood, California, and she uh, brought back a whole new set of uh, <laughs> all kinds of goodies. She has four different types of sunglasses and three different wigs. Now, here's the question. How many different combinations of sunglasses and wigs can she wear? Arthur. Uh, four types of sunglasses plus three kinds of wigs. Four plus three makes seven combinations. Thank you for your answer. And Chris? Each type of sunglasses can go with each wig. That's four times three, which makes 12 combinations. That's the answer, 12. All right. Thank you, Arthur and Chris. David, you've heard their answers. You can see the sunglasses and the wigs. Who is telling the truth for the square? Chris. Will the truth teller please stand? Drumroll. You got it? Oh, you're Yay! absolutely right. Let's get the red square. That was kind of tricky there, Chris. Have you uh, practiced with wigs and sunglasses before? Or? Oh, yeah, and I got it just right. This All right. Tell, you, tell me how you came up with that answer. <laughs> okay. There are four types of sunglasses and three kinds of wigs. Note the combinations. Each type of sunglasses with each wig. In other words, four times three, and that's 12 combinations. Viola. Thank you very much, Chris. A very difficult one to visualize, but you did it. Excellent, excellent. All right, Jamie, it's your turn. Pick a square. Uh, I'll pick U. The U, the top right square. All right, this is a video question, so keep your eye closely on the monitor. Dr. Flea Collar, veterinarian and lion tamer, was out feeding his kitties. He put out dishes of kitty food spaced 10 meters apart in a row. Now, while his back was turned... His pet lion, Walter, started at the first bowl and went down the line, eating all the kitty food. Walter walked 60 meters. Here's the question. How many dishes of kitty food did he eat? All right, there's your question for you. Now, Chris, what's the answer? Mm, six. All right. Arthur? Seven. Okay, there you have your answers. That's a real tough one. Think about it carefully, Jamie. Which of them is telling the truth for the square? Chris. 
All right, will the truth teller please stand? Oh, oh I'm sorry. No, it was Arthur, so that means your opponent, David, will get the red square there. And Arthur, how'd you come up with that answer? Let's uh, figure that well, one out. Well, Walter starts here at dish number one. He eats the food, moves 10 meters to dish number two, and eats again. After every 10 meters, he eats a dish of food. He walks 60 meters, that's six dishes plus the first one. That's seven dishes of kitty food. Okay. Thank you very much, Arthur. A very, very difficult question. Some of these you really have to sit and visualize. It's kind of tough. But nice try. David, back to you. Pick a square. A uh, V. The V, the bottom right, which will give you a win. Three in a row if you get it. So let's pay very close attention. Cynthia has before her two cubes. Now, Cynthia is going to cut the first cube like this. There you go. Now, when she separates these cube, this cube into two pieces, the new face will look like this. A triangle. All right, now, she's going to cut the second cube like this. Now, here's the question. When she separates the two pieces, what shape will this new face be? Now, she cut the first one, and the face looked like a triangle. Now, take a look at the second cut. The question is, what will the shape of the new face be? Arthur. It's a hexagon, a six-sided figure, since Cynthia cut through all six faces of the cube. All right, and Chris? No. The new face has five sides. See, look at the way Cynthia cut. There's a cut on top and then two cuts on each side uh, going down to a point on the bottom. And that makes a five-sided figure, which is a pentagon. All right, David, there you have your answers. Now take a real close look at that cube and the slice and think about what they said and tell me for the square and the win. Who is Arthur. telling the truth? Arthur. Your choice is Arthur. Will the truth teller please stand? Absolutely yeah, right. You get the square, you get three in a row, and you win the game. Very, very Yay. good, David. <laughs> Sensational job. A very tough question. Arthur, how in the world did you picture that? Well, Cynthia, you see? It's six sides, a hexagon. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Arthur. Jamie, you did a great job. Super attempt here, but uh, you didn't quite get three in a row before David did. So as a runner-up prize, we're going to give you a Square One TV sweatshirt. Sorry we didn't get to that coin question there, but uh, maybe next time. And David, congratulations. You played an excellent game. You had some tough questions. For winning, you get a Square One TV sweater. So thank you both very much. A very good game. You played very well. Hope you can come back again. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Arthur. And Reg, there he is. We'll see you next time on Square One Squares. Never dismay. He's seldom flushed. He's rarely afraid. I'll show you numbers that should be displayed. He's a hero and walk Caught you, didn't I? <laughs> Good. You're just in time for another exciting math episode of Dirk Niblick and the Math Brigade. Complete stories done in limited animation. Today's exasperating episode entitled Do Not Fold, Spindle, or Tape begins with our hero working on a mathematical supposition. Aha! My proof proves to be the proof of the pudding as far as Fermat's last theorem is concerned. I have proved that it was definitely Fermat's last theorem. A phone call. It could be from the President of the United States. It could be an ex-governor of Arizona trying to sell Dirk a used car. Hello, Dirk Niblick of the Math Brigade. Or it could be... I'm a summer with the Dirk. His mother. Hello, Mommy Dearest. I haven't heard from you in nearly eight minutes. What's that? You say you just got back from a baseball game. Uh-huh. I never even saw Oh, I didn't realize you were a fan of our national pastime. Oh, but it's so bad. It's so You're you're not. You you just like baseball. Uh -huh. I see. You say your team won the game seven to nothing. They whitewashed their opponents, did they? Hung the old horse collar on them. 
bagled them good, shut them out without a run. What's that? Your team scored seven runs without a single player touching home plate? Mother, that's well nigh impossible. Uh, no, 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 no. Of course I'm not calling you a liar, mother of me. But it's hard to believe a baseball team could score seven runs without a single player touching home plate. Uh, just a moment, mommy dearest. There's a tapping at my chamber door. Uh, what's that you're muttering, mutter? Tis some visitor rapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Well, you're probably right, but I'd best answer it. Hello, Dirk. Remember me? I'm Roy Tire Damage. Where was you? I was right here. We were roommates in college. Of course. Roy, wrong way, Tire Damage. Star athlete at our college, where was university? That's right. We were the fighting where was yous. As I recall, you got your nickname when you intercepted a pass in the Rose Bowl, got turned around and backed all the way down the field, scoring a touchdown for our opponents. Yes, and causing severe thorn damage to my rubber cleats. That's right. Well, what can I do for you, Wrong Way? May I come in? Certainly. Come in, sit down, Wrong Way, and take a load off your cleats. Thank you. What's that? Oh, uh, that's my mother. Oh, I'm sorry, Mama. Do I have a phone? Gee, she looks just like my telephone. Oh, I mean, uh, she's on the phone. You have a very tiny mother. Uh, I mean, Mother, I'll have to call you back in a few minutes. Uh, now then, wrong way, what can I do for you? Well, sir, Lieutenant, you were always pretty smart in school, especially in mathematics. Oh, well... Don't be modest. You even helped me through a couple of tough classes. Remember? Oh, I guess, perhaps. You even showed me how to print my name. Did I really? Uh-huh. And on the test, I got 60% of it right. I'm sure you didn't come here to wool gather wrong way. No, I didn't. I came because I just bought some blank audio tape cassettes. Blank cassettes, eh? Don't tell me you came here to listen to them, right? No, I bought them to record my thoughts, and I think the man who sold them to me cheated me out of my money. And as the two old college roomies talked, in another part of town, this scene was being played out on the canvas of life. Let's have the deal once again. I said, you may buy three tapes at 60 minutes each for $3.95, or two tapes of 90 minutes each for $2.95. Very well. I'll have the two 90-minute tapes. I wouldn't if I was you, toots. Three sixties is a much better deal. It is? Would I kid a dowager? And back in Dirk's HQ, wrong way tire damage was just concluding his story. And he kept pressuring me and told me to hurry up. And so I bought the three 60-minute tapes. I see. Did you try to buy the two 90-minute tapes? Uh-huh. But he said it wasn't a good deal. He told me to buy the 60s. This was his offer. Dirk decided to write the problem down to help him think about it more clearly. Three 60-minute tapes for $3.95. Two 90-minute tapes for $2.95. Yep, that was his offer. Three 60s for $3.95 or two 90s for $2.95. Don't you mind yell at you for writing on the walls? Do you see the error in your thinking wrong way? Yeah, there's plenty of air in my thinking. I got a whole head full of it. So, boys and girls, and any puppies or kittens that may be viewing, Dirk thinks he has found the answer to this problem. Have you spotted it? What is wrong with this proposition? Puzzle it out. Use your noodles. We'll be back in a cliché. Judge 
Way, let's pay a visit to your tape-selling friend. Okay, I'll walk with you. Uh, let's take my car. As our hero and his friend drove to the site of the tape sale, Wrong Way said... You know, Lieutenant. Wrong Way, you don't have to call me Lieutenant. Okay, you know, Sergeant, riding backwards gives one a sense of deja vu. I'm interested in your audio tapes. Word of mouth is spreading. Now, hoping mouth is spreading. I'd like to buy two 90-minute tapes for $2.95. You'll get a much better deal if you buy three tapes. Three is better than two. Not necessarily, and I want to buy two 90-minute tapes. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, the truth is I'm uh, out, out of 90-minute 90 90 minute tapes. tapes. Yes. yes, the truth is you never had any 90-minute tapes, did you? Well, uh, actually... This is bait-and-switch advertising. And it's unethical. Perhaps, but it's profitable. What's bait and switch mean, Corporal? They use a good deal as the bait to get you interested. And then they switch the deal at the last minute. That's how it works, all right. Three 60-minute tapes give you a total of 180 minutes of recording time. That's the same amount you get from two 90-minute tapes. 180 minutes. Right. Only he didn't have any 90-minute tapes to sell you. You're a bad person, Mr. Blank, audio cassette salesman. I'm semi-ashamed. Here's your money back, and uh, keep the tapes. I'll have the Better Business Bureau deal with you. And if that don't help, we'll get the Best Business Bureau. Thanks for your help, Dirk. Anytime, wrong way. Remember to look back both ways when crossing the street. And also, wrong way, you have to be careful when you're buying products from people. Really, you've got only yourself to blame. Ah, stop preaching, Niblick. It does make a fellow feel good to use some common sense and some mathematical prowess. Hmm, a ringing from a phone booth. I'd better answer it. It could be Superman. Hello? I see. What's that? Uh, oh, oh, the problem. Right. Yes, you said your baseball team won a game seven to nothing without a single player touching home plate. All right, Mother. How did they do it? Oh, 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 all the players who scored the runs were married, not single. Oh, that's very funny, Mommy. You little minx. Bye-bye, Mommy dearest. Satisfied that he had done a pretty zippy job, Dirk decided to take the rest of the day off and hide. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Monday, 9.43 a.m., and traffic in the greater Los Angeles area was in a real crunch due to a tractor-trailer truck which had jackknifed and spilled its load. 25,000 pounds of almonds. It made the freeway commuters nuts. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. The boss is Thad Green. My partner is George Frankly. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. George, have a good weekend? It's outrageous. Your weekend was outrageous? I'm not going to take any more of it. Had you been taking more of it, George? Who do they think I am? Who do they think you are, George? John Q. Public. That's who. And I've got some rice. Oh, good morning, Kate. How was your weekend? Not as outrageous as yours. 
What's wrong with you? I've never seen you act like this before. Do you know what they did at DDB? DDB? Ding Dong Broadcasting. Channel 14. Yes. They canceled the Mike Flyer show. They did, did they? That's too bad, I guess. Too bad? Too bad? Mike Flyers had the best local kid show in Los Angeles, and he's canceled. Mike Flyers is a private detective who solves crimes by using his head. Using his head, not his fists. It's an outrage that they would take a show like that off the air. Why did they take it off the air, George? I don't know, but I'm about to find out. Really? How? I did something I have never done before, Kate. I made a fan call. You mean a phone call? A fan call. I called the president of Mike's fan club and asked her to come down here. It's wonderful, George. Then, I called Mike Pliers, his very own self. They're both due any minute. You can hardly wait. So can I. I mean, I, idly, stood by when they canceled Love That Duck. And I did nothing when they took Who Shoe Is This off the air. But no more. George, I'm sure Ding Dong Broadcasting had good reasons for taking Mike Flyers off the air. Well, I'm not. And I'm going to get to the bottom of this. When it comes to important issues, people have to stand up, Kate. Sit down, George. And be counted. Monday. Well, wow. send them in, please. Your hero's here, George. for sore eyes you really are my gosh yes sir Mike Pliers George is a real fan of yours Mr. Pliers I'm Kate Monday oh well, nice to meet you Miss Monday I'm Jerry Lynn president of Mike's fan club how do you do why don't you have a seat Quite sure why we're here, George. You said it had to do with my show, or should I say, my ex show. Right, right, the show. As I said on the phone, Mike, I am outraged that Ding Dong Broadcasting took it off the air, and I want to know why, and then I want it put back. So do I, Mr. Frankly. We've written lots of letters to the station telling them it was the only good kids' show on television. The kids have done a great job, they've put in a lot of work. But it just doesn't seem to matter. What reason did the station give you for canceling the show? Uh, they said the ratings were too low. But your show is very, very popular. How could the ratings be low? That's what I say. It's the best show in the whole world. Besides, what are ratings, anyway? They are a way of estimating how many people are watching a particular television show, Jerry Lynn. And, uh, the station said not enough people were watching mine. How do they know? Does somebody go around and ask everybody? Not exactly. Nobody ever asked me. Me neither. I don't understand how they work, but I know that when your ratings go down, you can get in a lot of trouble. Like having your show canceled? Right. And I understand that part. I mean, it's just the way the business works. I would think you'd be angrier, Mike. I'm really hot under the collar about it. Well, I was when it first happened, but then I figured it's just the brakes. I'm still mad. You know, what was so surprising to me was that the ratings took such a steep drop all of a sudden. How so? Management at the station said I was doing beautifully. I was getting a rating of between five and six. And that's good? They were very happy at Ding Dong Broadcasting. And then? And then the ratings dropped in two weeks down to five tenths. That's when they yanked me off the air. 
who cares how many people watch? We were watching and we loved it. And we even learned from it. Me too. Companies who advertise on the station care, they want as many people as possible to watch the commercials. When the ratings go down, fewer people are watching, and advertisers look for another show with higher ratings. Uh-huh. Like the vicious Vinnie Vermin show. I, I hate, hate that, that show. show. Uh, it's very popular. I've never seen it. It's a show where this guy named Vicious Vinnie shouts and yells and throws pies at people and makes kids crawl around on the stage to win cheap prizes. Sounds pretty bad, all right. It's the lowest. My girlfriend went on it once, and they made her jump off a stepladder to a vat of gunk. It's totally mindless, Kate. The things they do teach are usually dumb or downright wrong. Anyway, it got awfully popular very recently. I still want to know who says so. Ratings again, Jerry. A company called the Hoover Rating Service takes samples of television viewers and they can determine what shows most people watch. What are samples? Jerry, if you want to know how many people watch a particular program, say that funny sitcom called I Thought It Was Your Nose, <laughs> uh, you can't very well go and ask everyone in Los Angeles. There are more than 13 million people in this area. So what do they do? They sample the population carefully. Example? They use a small group to represent the entire group. Then what? Then they ask the small group what show they were watching. They use those answers to estimate what the entire group is watching, and it's pretty darn accurate. George, how big is the sample? Gee, I don't know. I'd guess it's less than 1,000. You mean 1,000 viewers can tell the stations what shows 13 million people want to see? No. They can tell which shows the people are watching. It's like if you go to the doctor. If she wants to check your blood, she doesn't take all of it. Just a sample. A little bit. But there are more than 5,000 kids in our fan club, and nobody ever asks any of them, I betcha. It's not fair. Jerry, it costs too much money and takes too much time to ask everyone. <laughs> MathNet Monday. Why, yes, he is. Just a moment. It's for you, Mike. Oh, um, I left your number with my answering service. I hope it's okay. It's Ding Dong Broadcasting. Ding Dong Broadcasting? What? Maybe they found out what a terrible mistake they made. <clears throat> Mike Flyers, Private Eye. Yes, I'll be right down. You're going back in the air? No, no, I left a few things in my dressing room. They want it cleared out in the next half hour. One hundred percent of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National.